Absence of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. Members' motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Ambrose Lam will move a motion on comprehensively reviewing the securities market regime for small and medium enterprises. Two members will move amendments to the motion. This council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. Later, I will first call upon Mr. Lam Sang Kang to speak and move the motion. Then, I will call upon Mr. Edmund Wong and Mr. Robert Lee to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amendments at this stage. The joint debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon Mr. Lam Sang Kang to speak and move the motion. Mr. Lam. Mr. President, I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Together with Mr. Edmund Wong, uh, Mr. Robert Lee, Dr. Tan Yue Hung, and the other member, we conducted a survey on the IPO situation in Hong Kong. Together with the financial sector and the accountancy profession in Hong Kong, we held meetings to discuss the listing of SMEs in Hong Kong. Well, I am surprised by the survey outcome. That accounts for this motion debate. The as if um, the Hong Kong exchange has a snobbish attitude towards SMEs. There are many obstacles for SMEs to get listed. Last month, the Hong Kong exchange launched a public consultation on GEM, that is Growth Enterprise Market, the old name. Now, you only have the English name GEM, an abbreviated form. Well, this reformed proposal has come by too late. In previous years, many members put questions requesting the government to reform the growth enterprise market or GEM. It's been two years. Now GEM has become the shame of Hong Kong. It carries a very bad reputation. Nowadays, no, no um, overseas companies would come and get listed. The, pro the sectors are grieved by the consultation. The government should take a step to improving this reform proposal. Now, my motion debate is not on GEM reform. It's on comprehensively re reviewing the securities market regime for SMEs. Since 2018's reform, the Hong Kong exchange always boasted itself for achieving or scaling new hikes. Well, but this is really akin to the song of Jam, this, um, that is uh, the name of a singer, that uh, the, the achievements are really short-lived. In the recent years, the IPO situation in Hong Kong has been very gloomy. In 2018, only 70, uh, I mean 70, 75 companies were listed. And then there was a drastic drop last year, no company got listed. And then for the main board in 2022, 140 were listed. And then uh, the figure dropped by one third. As for the total funds raised, two years ago, the total was uh, 330 billion. And then it went down by two third. Only 30, I mean, only 33 new companies were, uh, were listed, uh, down by half. And uh, even Indonesia exchange is doing better than uh, our exchange. There are many structural issues, just to name a few. For example, the Hong Kong exchange arbitrarily uh, changes its rules. It goes against the free market principle. In 2018, the listing rules were revised. The minimum capital size increased from 200 to 500 million. For GEM, uh, from half a million to one mil uh, to, um, I mean, uh, 50 million to 100 million. The purpose of IPO listing is to uh, on GEM is to help small enterprises grow, but this is impossible for SMEs, and it is even more impossible for SMEs to go global. Uh, two years ago, the uh, the uh, profit requirement increased from fifty to eighty million. There are many IPO markets around the world, and we are competitors. The threshold is now higher in order to protect investors and ensure the quality of the IPO market. As long as you can have a um, 
sufficient capital, you get listed. Even if you your business is not profitable, in the end of the day, some um, subpar companies got listed. It tarnishes our image as a uh, premium IPO listing platform. The Hong Kong Exchange adopts a snobbish attitude. They always feel that um, that uh, there is a bigger fish to fry. They are very skeptical about the SMEs IPO listing applications. Their applications are carefully scrutinized, and then the SMEs will be grilled with unreasonable questions. For example, um, some SMEs have been asked why they would not go to Singapore to get listed instead. So the regulator is actually helping Singapore tell a good story. This is exactly their attitude of uh, having a bigger fish to fry and having disdain for smaller enterprises. Because of the regulatory requirements uh, in the United States, Accountants should be, I mean, auditors and accountants uh, should be engaged. Well, today, uh, this year, the IPO market collapsed. Foreign enterprises experience redundancy. Many foreign enterprises have already been delisted or they have left Hong Kong. We should address this issue. The third problem is there is a systemic issue. There is an overlapping between the Hong Kong Exchange and the SFC. There is a lack of uh, transparency in the eligibility or the vetting criteria. The sector dare not complain against the Hong Kong Exchange or the SFC or they may uh, there may be retaliation. Now, my motion debate seeks to uh, urge the administration to look look at this issue squarely. I would like to invite members to give their invaluable input and support my motion. Thank you. This council will now proceed to adjourn debate on the motion and the amendment. Mr. Edmund Wong. Thank you. I'm grateful to Mr. Lam Sun Kong for moving this motion, which was arranged uh, to be held. I mean, the debate was to be held uh, before the summer recess. And then uh, there was uh, this public consultation paper from Hong Kong EXA uh, on reform of uh, the uh, listing of SMEs. Now, Hong Kong was uh, the first uh, IPO center in Hong Kong. I hope it can shine again. Since the form, GEM reform in 2019, we uh, see that Hong Kong X have been uh, very uh, panicky. It uh, feels that all SMEs are bandits, uh, they are evil, and they are trying uh, to eat investors. As a result, uh, many Enterprises cannot, could not list in Hong Kong. In the past, uh, um, enterprises uh, would have a listing ceremony. The last time we had such a ceremony was in July, in January 2021, three years ago. Now we don't even have one new company listed on GEM this year. I was born and I grew up in Hong Kong. I acquired my accountancy uh, professional uh, qualifications in Hong Kong. I'm grateful to the support of Hong Kong the country for my career development. In the past and the future, we would like to use our professional knowledge to uh, reward or to contribute to the country in Hong Kong. Well, since I became a legislator, many people in the trade have told me that Edmund, we there is no future for Hong Kong. It is so difficult to help uh, enterprises to list in Hong Kong. We very much want to help, but when clients come to inquire, well, uh, people in the sector will um, ask them to do it elsewhere. I feel very embarrassed and ashamed because, as we all know, in the past few years, we cannot change the view of uh, the regulators. They feel that so long as they can uh, uh, hold, uh, put a tight grip over uh, these enterprises, then investors can be protected. This is just like the um, 
Transport Department banning all vehicles uh, from the roads of Hong Kong so that there will be zero traffic accident. But what, what will our economy be like? I think all regulators have to understand that the point of regulation is for the long-term development of the sector, and there must be a balance between development and regulation. Uh, doing it lopsided will harm investors or participants. Finally, there is a public consultation on uh, reform of uh, the GEM. Now, starting from last October, when the CE delivered his policy address, he wanted to vitalize GEM. And now the second policy address will be delivered soon. And it, finally, at long last, we saw a public consultation document. More than two years have elapsed. Many um, ventures and also investors have gone overseas for a listing. According to Pit Mawik, uh, digest uh, for the first three quarters of 2023, only 44 enterprises applied to list in Hong Kong, raising $46 billion down 60 and 65 percent respectively for the third quarter. Only 13 enterprises successfully got listed in Hong Kong, uh, raising $1.3 billion. Hong Kong X have uh, gone, have fallen out of the top five uh, exchanges in the world. Our market transaction or burn, uh, turnover dropped to uh, $90 billion. Uh, All-time no was $40 billion. For the uh, turnover in jail was only $73 million, the lowest. Uh, I think if we look at uh, the price of a luxury flat in Hong Kong, it can well be m higher than that of uh, the uh, turnover of jam in a day. So I hope they can introduce a new mechanism as soon as possible. And I hope they can have uh, the number of uh, SMEs uh, that uh, can successfully list in Hong Kong to be one of their KPIs. Thank you. Mr. Robert Lee, uh, let me declare interest. I am in the uh, securities industry. Now, the situation is complicated and changing. And because of the three-year pandemic, we face various challenges, whether we we'll talk about the turnover, uh, the number of companies listed, etc. Things uh, have a uh, been not so good. I'm grateful to the government for setting up a working group to promote um, the turnover of uh, the market. And we will have uh, long-term measures to improve the situation. As a member of the task force, of course, we must, um, uh, I must not disclose the uh, discussion and also recommendations of the task force, but I have uh, put forward the views of the sector in the task force on many occasions. I urge the administration to adopt reasonable and useful information from the sector as far as possible. I'm sure the government understand what is our greatest concern, a transaction cost, a regulation, etc. Now, I'd like to uh, focus on uh, the uh, listing um, channels for SMEs. I'm very grateful to Mr. Uh, Lam Seng Kong for his original motion and also Mr. Edmund Wong for his amendment. I also have my own amendment, and that is we can review our role positioning of financial intermediaries of different capital backgrounds. So this is more and SMEs in listing and raising funds. Now, many people are concerned about this, and I think we share some common pain points. Now, there is uh, less room for serving IPOs of SMEs. You used to have a few uh, dozens of listing in JAM. I think the purpose is to create uh, job opportunities and to generate demand for professional services. One IPO exercise can bring business uh, to investment banks and uh, to, prof to accountants and other professional services. Hong Kong X just issued a public consultation for reform 
of uh, SME and GEM, and they have taken into account aspirations of many of our uh, views, including a sports region and a streamlined transfer mechanism, etc. But according to the market, the higher the uh, capital value of a company, the less disclosure requirement there is, and also the faster the exercise can be conducted. They are very critical. When it comes to SMEs, I think they have stifled the opportunity for SMEs to be listed. I think we should review the vetting procedures and also criteria so that SMEs will not be subject to unfair treatment. Hong Kong X is the only stock exchange in Hong Kong. It may want to attract large enterprises and uh, special uh, categories of enterprises to Hong Kong, but it should help companies of different scale and from different sectors. It should also help SMEs and startups from ASEAN and Middle East companies to come to Hong Kong so that we can play a better role in helping to become a listing center. Listing costs are very, ex very high because the vetting policies have raised the threshold and ultimately it is because the regulator has uh, forfeited its rationale of uh, people uh, being responsible for their own disclosure. It has included new requirements when the market is weak. I hope the SAO government can help SMEs so that they can use the fundraising platform of Hong Kong. With these remarks, I urge members to support my amendments. Thank you. Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury. President, first, let me thank Mr. Ambrose Lam for moving the motion on comprehensively reviewing the securities market regime for small and market, medium enterprises. I also thank Mr. Edmund Wong and Mr. Robert Lee for their amendments. They have given us this opportunity to discuss the topic. The motion and its amendments mention the support in the 20th Party Congress report and the national 14 5 year plan for Hong Kong to enhance and cement its role as an international financial center with concrete goal, becoming a stronger regional hub for the global offshore RMB business, serving as a better international asset management and risk management center, and also expanding the mutual market access between the mainland and Hong Kong's financial markets. To strengthen Hong Kong's role as an international financial center, we are committed to supporting our country's strategic plans of the Greater Bay Area Development and Belt and Road Initiative. We play our part as the meeting point of the dual circulations. We foster the interaction and connection between the mainland and global capital market. Our investment product, risk management tools, good corporate financing and treasury management options have turned Hong Kong into a more competitive, vibrant, and diverse financial market. Under one country, two systems, Hong Kong is a highly open and internationalized market. Our regulatory regime is on a par with major overseas markets. We have good infrastructure, free flow of information and capital. We are a great place for corporate financing and taking business goal global. To turn Hong Kong into a fundraising platform with greater depth and breadth, the government has been watching global trends and taking proactive measures. It works with the Securities and Futures Commission and the Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing Limited in constantly refining the listing regime. In 2018, HKEX launched a new listing regime with the right safeguard emerging and innovative firms with a weighted voting right structure and pre-revenue biotechnology firms were allowed to get listed in Hong Kong. This was also a new and convenient way for firms from Greater China and overseas to seek secondary listing in Hong Kong. The new regime has worked well since its launch. As at the end of September this year, 93 firms have been listed under the new regime. 
with funds raised through initial public offerings exceeding $588 billion, or 40% of the total funds raised through IPOs in this period. Hong Kong has also become one of the world's leading biotech financing centers. In January 2022, HKEX launched a listing regime featuring the special purpose acquisition vehicle, a new listing channel. A SPAC is a cash company without business before a merger and acquisition with a firm with substantive business operations. To strike a reasonable balance between investor protection, market quality, and market appeal, HKEX imposed rules under the new regime to safeguard investors' interests. This mechanism is an alternative to main board listing through traditional IPOs. More firms now have an easier time with listing in Hong Kong. This boosts Hong Kong's competitiveness as a listing platform. This year, HKEX launched a listing regime for specialist technology firms in March after consulting the market. Since then, tech firms that meet a new eligibility test have been able to get listed on the main board. There are five eligible tech sectors, new generation information technology, advanced hardware and software, advanced materials, new energy and green technology, and new food and agricultural technology. The new listing regime lets high-tech firms from Hong Kong and elsewhere tap international capital. This drives the development of the tech sector and the real economy and further boosts the local capital market. Since 2022, major central banks have tightened their monetary policies. Global geopolitical tensions and other macro factors have also been at work. As a result, funds raised through global IPOs more than halved year on year in 2022. Inevitably, Hong Kong's IPO market also suffered. Market development measures and the joint effort of market participants resulted in the local listing of 90 firms in total last year, with over 100 billion Hong Kong dollars raised through IPOs, ranking Shen fourth globally after the U.S., Shanghai and Shenzhen. New listings in Hong Kong this year affected by external factors are not as impressive as in the past. Tightened policies restrict liquidity, reducing the number of massive IPOs. Still, as at the end of September, HKEX has received 115 listing applications with a total of 94 being processed. This shows the enduring popularity of Hong Kong securities market among issuers. We note Mr. Edmund Wong's reference to firms opting for overseas listing in his amendment. This is about the China concept stocks. To bring back these stocks listed overseas and attract quality overseas issuers to Hong Kong, in January last year, the HKEX implemented reforms to refine listing for overseas issuers. The measures included allowing greater China companies without a weighted voting right stru structure and not from innovative sectors who seek secondary listing in Hong Kong through a preferential pathway. Issuers with a weighted voting right or variable interest entity structure have been given greater flexibility to achieve dual primary listing in Hong Kong. HKEX has also devised a set of core shareholder protection standards for firms from different places to offer issuers from greater China and overseas greater ease in listing in Hong Kong. As at late September this year, 31 China concept stock issuers have returned to Hong Kong with a total market cap over 70% of all such stocks listed in the U.S. Mr. Ambrose Lam's motion focuses on improving the listing regime for small and medium enterprises. The financial secretary proposed in his 2023-24 budget reform recommendations for JAM to be made by Hong Kong EX. Late last month, a public consultation started. Key proposals include a new streamlined transfer, me transfer mechanism, a new eligibility test for R&D heavy firms, the removal of mandatory quarterly reporting requirements, fewer ongoing compliance obligations for JAM issuers,
These steps are meant to attract quality SM small and medium issuers and give them the chance to move to the main board. The public consultation will conclude on November 6th. Based on the views received, HKEX aims to implement the new arrangements in the first quarter next year. Again, I thank Mr. Ambrose Lamb for his motion. This discussion will let us hear members' insights into the GM reform during this consultation. HKEX will also get a better sense of members' views. Later, I will offer a consolidated response to members' comments and make further remarks. Thank you, President. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Adrian Ho. Thank you, Mr. Deputy, and I'm grateful to Mr. Lam Sam Kung for sponsoring this motion and also uh, the other two members for moving members. Last year, in the uh, Central Economic Working Meeting, President Xi that they had to attract high-quality foreign investment into the country. What Hong Kong need is to bring in new momentum and attract different enterprises from different sectors to uh, list in Hong Kong and to join our securities market and to bring more f a future for our SMEs. However, the number of uh, listed companies has dropped. On the 15th of June of uh, September, there was only a turnover of $71 million. Only 1.5% of the turnover of uh, 10 cents. And this goes to show that our jam market is almost stagnant. It cannot really be a fundraising platform for SMEs. If the situation continues, Hong Kong will no longer be regarded as a place with favorable business environment and for fundraising. It would be impossible to attract quality foreign investment to Hong Kong. Our gem can be a platform for fundraising of SMEs, but with the um, reform of gem listing rules in 2018, uh, the it has been more difficult for SMEs to raise funds. There is recently a public consultation going on on jam listing reforms. This can, there is a proposals for a transfer mechanism, and then we can also attract uh, companies that focus on R and D, but without uh, any. Um, um, any profit yet. This, as for this um, revival of the transfer mechanism, then uh, lawyers and accountants and uh, other professional fees are a burden on listing. I think this can help the market to grow and make the market more active. The turnover in GEM is always low. Valuation of some companies is also low. Uh, people are worried about uh, volatilities as well as price rigging. This has dampened uh, people's interest in investing in GEM. When it comes to regulation, Mr. Lam Sang Kong did say that it's true that we should catch the bandits. But we must catch the bad guys, but promotion and publicity is just as important. We must let investors know that SMEs have um, have a prospect for growth so as to enhance investors and corporate investors' confidence. We should also promote GEM to overseas investors so they can come to Hong Kong for investment opportunities and bring new resources. Thank you. I support the motion and the amendments.
Mr. Edward Long. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. I speak in support of the motion and the amendment moved by my fellow party member. Well, recently there is uh, this uh, saying that jam may collapse anytime soon with a turnover size of some 93 million of jam. The It is really um, dwindling. Comparing to 2021, the JAM index was over 200. Now it's 23.1621, and that's just 10%. It's very close to zero. JAM is left on the back burners. It's being ignored. It's really an irony for Hong Kong as an international financial center. It all boils down to the revised rules in 2018. Apart from raising the threshold for jam listing, Hong Kong Exchange turned jam into an, a standalone board. In other words, no company can first use jam as a springboard for listing on the main board in the future. Starting from 2019, only 15 companies were listed to a tune of 4.3 billion of market capitalization. Last year, no company was listed. Only 2.7 billion of funds were raised. Jam is now stagnant. Whereas on the mainland, two years ago, the Beijing Exchange was established. The objective of its establishment is to provide a listing platform for small to medium enterprises. Last year, 80 companies were listed with um, 16.4 billion yuan raised. So we're talking about for um, 2.7 billion Hong Kong dollars versus 16.4 billion yuan. We were once the exemplary model. What have we become? Well, in a reverse way, we are still something that others can learn from. We must catch up or we will be overtaken by neighboring markets. It's been five years and the financial secretary announced in this year's budget that the Hong Kong exchange will put forward a reform after consulting stakeholders. On the 26th of September, the consultation paper was launched. This consultation paper touches on a number of issues close to the heart of the sector. This is a small step taken to rectify the situation. The proposal has come by too late. I urge the sector and members of the public to give their views on what we should do to reinvigorate JAM during the consultation period. It will end on the 6th of November. I'd also like the administration to explain the timetable. At the conclusion of the consultation on the 6th of November, how long will it take for the exchange to put forward a proposal? Will there be, say, a timetable? Will the task be completed uh, before the next budget? As for the revised rules in 2018, would the administration admit that uh, harsh me to, um, excessively harsh measures were put in place to tackle shell activities and that jam is now stagnant as a result? And who should be accountable for this blunder? We are supposed to be a premium IPO listing platform, but in terms of attracting uh, foreign investment and allowing general public to participate in the market activities, uh, we need to rethink the situation. I support the motion. Mr. Rock Chen.
Mr. Deputy, I thank Mr. Ambrose Lamb for moving the motion. The market turnover is dwindling. The market is very quiet. The total mark, uh, turnover stood at some $40 billion as of the 5th. For market capitalization this year, the figure stood at uh, $24.6 billion Hong Kong dollars. We ranked the 8th uh, among other IPO markets in the world. Unless we have an influx of new capital, our, uh, we will remain stagnant. Jam is drying up. It is so quiet. In 2021-22, respectively, one and zero company got listed on Jam. Market capitalization dropped from 1980 billion uh, in 2019 to 62.9 billion. Now, down by 65%. We are facing this predicament because of internal and external problems. For external problems, it's not it's beyond our control. Whereas internally, reforms should be put in place to address the shortcomings. I have three suggestions. We need to work on the institution and the system. We need to adopt a new mindset instead of placing too much emphasis of on um, market regulation over encouraging investment. On the pretext, I mean, on on the pretext of uh, investor protection, we m must not compromise market development. New York is an international financial center, and it has a very good balance. New York is number one because of a diversified market system, abundant liquidity, as well as um, popular listed companies. There should be a clear delineation between the roles and functions of Hong Kong Exchange and the SFC. The Hong Kong Exchange should focus on providing a listing platform. The SFC should place focus on enforcement. The listing, a listing committee should be the major gatekeeper, and the SFC should not have any role to play when it comes to the listing matters. On investor protection, the SFC should take enforcement action to go after market um, uh, price rigging and market manipulation after the companies have been listed. On the vetting of listing applications, a level playing field should be provided. There should not be any bias. A performance pledge should be put in place. The rulings should not be delayed indefinitely causing an unreasonable escalation of listing costs. The DAB earlier put forward a proposal. We suggest that the uh, listing procedures for JAM should be streamlined. This is in line with uh, what is proposed in the consultation paper. Now, the paper also suggests that uh, the mandatory quarterly reporting requirement be scrapped because this can help lower the listing costs. The DAB also suggests a streamlined procedure for vetting the listing applications. A market maker mechanism should be put in place so as to help quality SMEs get listed. One of the ESG objectives of the Hong Kong Exchange should be to help SM, local SMEs grow. We are tasked. Uh, with contributing to financial reform of our country. We need to make sure the market is vibrant and attractive without compromising investor protection. I so submit, Mr. Deputy, I support the motion and the amendments. Mr. Yim Kong. Mr. Deputy, I support Mr. Am uh, Ambrose Lam's original motion and the amendments 
moved by other members. We are at a critical juncture. JAM should fully utilize its role to provide opportunities for SMEs to raise funds. Since 2018, however, the JAM listing rules were revised. It came at a, at a higher cost uh, for companies to be listed on JAM. Um, this caused financing issues for SMEs. So far this year, no company has been listed uh, on JAM, only that uh, four applications have been received. One of which uh, has problems with uh, submitting a pro pro prospectus to the um, Hong Kong Exchange. For the five listed companies, the turnover is slightly over ten million. For the other, for the uh, other listings, the daily average turnover. Fewer than zero point, um, I mean half a million a day. Presidency once stressed that the country strongly supports Hong Kong's position as an international center for innovation technology, and we must give play to our advantages and improve a listing platform. We should provide more support to INT enterprises. We should give them more resources to promote com transformation of research outcomes. In last year's policy address, the chief executive expressly pointed out that the Hong Kong Exchange will be reform uh, launching the jam list will be launching a reform. Favorable conditions will be provided for the listing of SMEs on jam. I have the following suggestions for the administration. First, we should draw reference from the mainland experience. Uh, there is a financing platform for SMEs. For example, there's a star market for Shanghai Exchange and also a China for Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Uh, they serve smaller companies. And then for JAM, we should take a tiered approach. With risk disclosure requirement put in place, we can then um, incorporate them in the Stock uh, Connect schemes for mainland investors to participate in the process and uh, increase turnover for JAM. The transfer mechanism should be streamlined as long as the main listing requirements are met the companies may apply for a transfer to the main board this will help uh, make jam more attractive to investors third we should also incorporate quality uh, companies to be listed on jam so as to bolster jams status and positioning so as to encourage more SMEs to be listed for the sustainable development of the board. It is hoped that all stakeholders can make a joint a concerted effort so that adopting this top-down design, we can create a favorable development condition for SMEs and startups for the purpose of diversified economic development. Mr. Lai Tong Kwok. Mr. Deputy, I thank Mr. Ambrose Lam for his motion. Last month, the HKEX proposed a reform for GEM. So it's a good time to review where GEM was and where it is now. GEM was first set up in 1999. Jam's feature was to so was something with a lower threshold so that medium or growing companies could raise funds on a platform other than the main board. That was also the time of the dot com wave. Many companies added the, the 
dot com to the company name and try to get listed, and then the dot com bubble burst. Many tech firms saw their share prices plunge. Many halted trading. The market suffered. People lost confidence in Jim. So there was a while when there was little activity on Jim. In two thousand and eight, there was a huge change. It became a secondary board, a stepping stone for firms to move to the main board. There was a streamlined mechanism, so the transfer could happen without a sponsor. The IPO prospectus could be done electronically. That slashed the time and cost for moving to the main board. But the 2008 reform also made things easier for those with ulterior motives. The reduced Threshold encouraged shell companies, and with shell companies came market misconduct, share price volatilities, major shareholders absconding, market corruption. So the twenty o eight reform stuck around for ten years or so, and then came another overhaul. In 2018, the growth enterprise market was renamed as just Jim. The 2008 positioning was dropped. Since 2018, Jim was no longer a stepping stone. 2018 saw Jim turning into a standalone board. So we have the 2018 reform, and then the effort from HKEX. We see a massive drop in shell activities. Sadly, the threshold have gone too high. Since 2018, little activity has been seen on Jam. From 2019 to 2022, Jam listings were 15, 8, and 1 respectively. Finally, came to zero. Funds raised, 4.3 billion. It fell to two point seven billion dollars. So Jim fails to play the role of helping SMEs raise funds. Now, Jim will see another change. This time, we don't have to wait ten years. Last year, the chief executive announced a plan to revitalize Jim. In his policy address last month, HKEX put forward GM reform proposals. One bringing back a transfer mechanism, and also a new eligibility test for R and D heavy firms. So that means going back to Jam's old role as a stepping stone. A look at Jam's history shows there's always this chopping and changing with Jam, and no reform has pleased everyone. The watchdog wants to combat shell companies, but shell companies are mostly gone, and Jam has been anemic. So now is the time to help SCM with fundraising, and we need to help Jam restore that role. We need to start somewhere. Giants grow from small firms. A good fundraising channel is a key ingredient. SMEs are a key pillar of our economy. SMEs make up eighty to ninety percent of our firms. They hire a lot of, of of our workers, so we need to get the reform right, so that we have the right conditions for SMEs to raise funds and develop. And please, can our regulator not snub the smaller market players, Dr. Johnny Ng? Mr. Deputy, the 14th five-year plan sets out the eight centers for Hong Kong. One part is to raise our role as an international financial center and an international INT hub. To achieve that, the government must reform the SME listing system. We need to bring in global capital. We also want to bring in top-notch tech firms. I support Mr. Ambrose Lam. Motion and also the amendments from Mr. Edwin Wong and Mr. Robert Lee. In recent years, Jam is doing worse and worse. No new listings.
in two years. There was a change to GEM rules in 2018 that raised a threshold for listing on GEM and it dropped the transfer mechanism from GEM to the main board and that made things easier, made things harder for SMEs. So GEM was hobbled. This has come under fire. Last month, HKEX proposed a reform. It started a public consultation. It proposed a, a streamlined transfer mechanism for eligible tech firms to move to the main board. But there are many details under this plan. We are relaunching our economy. This is a critical stage. GEM should be leveraged as a platform for SMEs and startups to raise funds. I welcome the proposal. I want to make three points. First, the new proposal about bringing back the streamlined transfer mechanism and also a new eligibility test for gro high growth firms. This can attract tech firms. Strengthening Hong Kong's role as an international financial center and regional financial hub and turning Hong Kong into an R&D hub means we need to lower the threshold for tech firms to get listed in Hong Kong. Last year, the government released the Hong Kong INT development blueprint mapping out Hong Kong's INT in the next five to 10 years. The direction is right. To drive our INT development, we need more unicorns and we need more resources and support for startups to drive our economy. We need to be strategic with AI, life sciences, data science, fintech, advanced manufacturing, we need to focus on these areas. The government should look at the experience of other markets. The mainland has listing platforms for SMEs. We can learn from Chinex of the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. We should support innovative growing firms. We can turn GEM into a board for tech firms to bring in those firms. Third, as regional comprehensive economic partnership takes effect, China is deepening its links with ASEAN. So we should play our role as a gateway. We should foster the links between the ties between China and ASEAN, and we should leverage the advantages of one country, two systems by forging closer ties with ASEAN. We should work towards becoming a listing place of choice for ASEAN, so that and then we can move on to the other parts of Asia. And biotech, medicine science, nanotechnology, Web3, new materials, new energy. There are many great firms in the Asia Pacific. ASEAN is doing well. So we should look at our SME listing system to bring in more talent and firms. So the government needs to review and enhance the SME listing systems soon so that we become a premier location of listing for SMEs. That way we bring in the tech firms, we should scale up, beef up the market so that we can become a, a premier place of financing. That way we can create even stronger impetus for our INT development. I so submit. Mr. Ronick Chen. Mr. Deputy, Hong Kong has been very good at fundraising and we're renowned for that. In 2018, we had a new chapter to the listing rules. That was a new set of rules and framework. That chapter allows biotech firms to get listed in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong became a premier place for listing for Chinese firms. For seven years, we ranked first in IPOs. In the total funds raised in 2021, we raised a historic high. The year saw 98 listings, raising funds at $320 billion. But the GEM listings that year saw just one IPO. IPO do well, but SMEs aren't, don't get a slice of the action. In 2023, IP, IPOs are looking worse. So there is little hope for SMEs. Mr. Deputy, governments elsewhere stress the role of SMEs 
the rollout SME financing schemes and support measures. Credit export guarantee, credit guarantee are some measures, but there are also measures on market. The Beijing Stock Exchange was set up. This shows the mainland's determination to support SMEs. Market cap revenue profits are the conventional indicators. The Beijing Stock Exchange also looks at the R&D expenditure as a criterion. This shows their support for tech companies that focus on R&D. Hong Kong wants to learn from this experience. We need to truly approach this matter with a new mindset. Firms need funding to keep doing R&D and growing their business. Funding shortage confronts many startups. In capital markets and innovation and technology, Hong Kong should work with the rest of GBA. We need to make good use of our role as a fundraising platform to further grow the economy and create synergy. This year, the Asia market in the mainland is expected to see 320 to 370 new listings to, ra to raise 460 billion yuan. The Shanghai stock market, the China of the Shenzhen Stock Exchange and the BSE are expected to see 270 to 300 new listings and they're expected to raise 350 billion yuan. This shows there is demand from mainland firms through listing. Most of our IPOs are from the mainland. So the business opportunities are still there. Global geopolitics means there are uncertainties for new listings in Hong Kong. This year, our IPO market is seeing the lowest level of funds raised. We need to be mindful of worst case scenarios. We need to work towards improving our listing regime to cement our role as a financial center. Local mainland stock exchanges like those in Sh Beijing and Shanghai proactively approach firms. HKEX is doing something similar, but it focuses on the large firms and rarely reaches out to small and medium firms to fix our problem. Looking at Saudi Aramco or Cainiao is not good enough. We need to reach out to SMEs. We need to look at the paperwork required. I support Mr. Ambrose Lam's motion and Mr. Edmund Wong and Mr. Robert Lee's amendments. Their concerns are valid. Our capital market is at a critical stage. The government needs to do a review ASAP of the listing regime. There's geopolitics. We need to think about ways to bring mainland firms and Belt and Road countries firms who come here to expand our capital markets capacity so that we can have a diversified and multi-tiered capital market. That way we can cement our role as a financial center. So submit. Thank you. Mr. Holden Chow. Mr. Deputy, I support in support of Mr. Lam Sang Kang's motion, and I'm also uh, grateful to members who have moved amendment to the motion. I support them all. Now we are talking about the jumpboard today. As mentioned by members, it's been stagnant for quite a while. There is no activity. People say that is because of a change in the listing system. I think uh, there is a reason for that. Based on my very limited understanding, the Hong Kong X and SFC have uh, been more interested in listing of uh, large enterprises and not the small ones. Some government officials may say that we keep inviting ASEAN and Belt and Road countries. Now, ASEAN, myself and the DAB made a visit to ASEAN countries, and I understand that companies from Thailand, 
and Indonesia were interested in fundraising in Hong Kong, but the regulators gave people the impression that they were not friendly, they wanted to turn people away, and ASEAN companies felt that they re were regarded as being second class by our regulators and they were not welcome here. Many people have this impression. I think uh, this is really very detrimental. Now let's not talk about some Chan. Even Singapore, our neighbor, is very aggressive in inviting ASEAN companies to raise funds there. They have a dedicated team to communicate with these companies to iron out difficulties. Now, you may uh, say that uh, our capital pool and also our turnover is bigger than that of Singapore. Why do people want to go to Singapore? Now, from uh, their perspective, however, still they can list and raise funds in Singapore, at least so they can do it there. The attitude of our regulators have to change. All right, we have revitalized uh, the jam market, but is it really is uh, the uh, switch mechanism proposal really that useful? I asked an oral question in Legco. I asked about the listing requirements of our GEM for ASEAN countries. Now, uh, let's uh, disregard the exact listing date because it all depends on the market situation. From the launch of an application to approval in Hong Kong X, it takes on average 180 days. But uh, for companies from ASEAN, countries, the longest was 800 days. You may blame it on COVID. You may say that because of COVID, uh, the time was much longer. But you have to compare with local companies during the same period. The longest was only 200 odd days. This goes to show that attitude is everything. The undersecretary is uh, very friendly. We frequently go to him for help. After DAB came back from ASEAN, we approached the Undersecretary for help, but I understand that it is the whole mechanism. We have competitors, even for the property market, we're asking for removal of uh, lifting of some of the special measures. There is no reason to ask people to pay another 15 percent in stamp duty. No one, no talents would be interested to come. We have to remove those harsh measures in order to be competitive. We have heard views from the sector in the past and we are here to reflect them to you. Thank you. I support the motion and the amendments. Mr. Benson, look. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. I'm grateful to Mr. Lam Sang Kong's motion on comprehensively reviewing the securities market regime for SMEs. I support the motion as well as the amendments. According to our annual report in 2021, we have over 350,000 SMEs in Hong Kong accounting for 98% of the total number of enterprises in Hong Kong. SMEs uh, need liquidity, they need uh, funds, and they need uh, funds to expand their business. If we rely only on credit facilities, the cost is very high and is challenging for their operation. So when SMEs have expanded to a certain scale, if they want to scale a new hikes, they have uh, to consider fundraising raising funds in the market, and it will be a milestone for a company to uh, list and raise funds. SMEs find it difficult to satisfy the listing rules in the uh, 
main board, and that's why we have GEM. But as mentioned by members, the GEM market has done very poorly. There were 318 in 2019. It dropped to 340 in 2021. The turnover fell from 127 billion to 41 billion dollars. The number of applications fell from 71 to three. Members have talked about the main cause for this reason because in 2018, the um, Hong Kong X made germ a separate board and the simplified transfer procedures was removed and there was a new uh, listing requirements from uh, 100 million dollars uh, it was raised 150 dollars etc gem was a springboard for enterprises to transfer to the main board but the new requirements made it difficult for smes to do that this has undermined the uh, functions and uh, the benefits of gem i don't know whether the undersecretary would agree with me that even SMEs find it not so attractive to join the gem market. All right, at long last, Hong Kong X is going to introduce reforms. It has recently launched a consultation paper on gem listing reforms. There will be a new streamlined transfer mechanism. In future, SMEs will be encouraged uh, to use GEM as a springboard to join the main board. I, I think we should uh, commend the government for listening to the suggestions of the market. And I think we can do more in order to revitalize the GEM market first. Uh, we should launch the stream, new streamlined transfer mechanism, and secondly, the government should reposition GEM. The government should be more proactive. For instance, it can lobby Belt and Road companies and companies from the Middle East to um, list on GEM and then switch to main board. Secondly, we must enhance the effectiveness of GEM. Uh, the turnover has been dwindling, and that's the reason for the drop in number of listings. We can allow s um, um, sizable s stock um, 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 security brokers to be market makers in GEM. We can also extend the coverage of GEM. We can discuss with investors in the mainland. Some of the shares in a gem should be included in the connect mechanism so that there can be more transaction. We should also lower the stamp duty for security transactions. It was raised to 0.13%. We are now the third highest stamp duty for stock transactions in the world. I hope that can be lowered. Thank you, Mr. Rin Kwong. Thank you. I fully support Mr. Lam Sang Kong's original motion. I also support the amendments from Mr. Edmund Wong and also Mr. Robert Lee. Our listing market has been stagnant in recent years. Many people in the sector have a lot of grievances. Some have decided to leave Hong Kong altogether. So I fully support Mr. Sam Lam Sam Kong's motion. And in fact, uh, it is um, long overdue. In fact, in 2021, the total IPO in the world was two. 2,430. It fell to 1,450 in 2022. However, Asian markets are more attractive and active than European markets. I am not an expert in this area. Still, I have some views. Our regulators have done a very good job in regulation. 
they are very stringent but not creative and innovative enough facing facing fierce competition we must ask ourselves what strategies do we have for SMEs the business environment technology development professional training and development uh, tax arrangements regulations and rules they are all interrelated has the relevant authority conducted an overview a review of all these Asia is a populated area and the um, population are relatively young in this area to encourage SMEs to come to raise funds in Hong Kong we cannot just rely on the SFSC we must have a success sustainable and lively environment conducive to investment so the SMEs minded to list and raise funds in Hong Kong will see that the regulatory framework is reasonable the cost is reasonable and efficient and effective and there is opportunity for them to collaborate with other players. When I visited Singapore recently, I had the opportunity to discuss with family offices and private organizations that support or that serve family offices. We do not need one single measure. We need the collaboration of different departments so that we can come up with a strategy that attract investors. Hong Kong has become a world financial city thanks to the hard work of many in the past few decades. Perhaps uh, we have been too complacent. As we progress, our competitors are progressing and they are advancing faster than us. We must not underestimate this matter. Come next week, there will be another policy address. I hope that CE can have KPIs on the number of listings in Hong Kong as well. Thank you. Ms. Nixie Lam, now we're facing the issues of geopolitics and high interest rate environment. So the market activities have been dwindling. In the first three quarters of this year, IPO listings and market capitalization dropped by 65 and 60 percent. As a result, the global IPO ranking of Hong Kong dropped to the eighth place. In order to create a good um, and healthy cycle for the equity market in Hong Kong, we need to create a favorable environment to give us an edge. In 2018, the Hong Kong X launched a reform and uh, SMEs found it more difficult to get listed on JAM. Now, together with a number of DAB members who are concerned about the financing aspect of SMEs, we started our work in the beginning of this year. Professional services, SMEs, the financial sector were consulted on the JAM listing reform, and they remain pessimistic. They say that they, the jam should be folded all together. Now, in light of the views collected, in order to tackle the issue of uh, obstacles for SME listing on jam, the streamlined transform, uh, transfer mechanism should be reinstated with certain requirements. The requirements should be reinstated. Only that a more relaxed approach should be taken towards the uh, market capitalization test and daily turnover test so that JAM will become more attractive and we can salvage investors' confidence without compromising the need for market regulation. We can re instate the function of JAM as helping and small and and medium enterprises grow. We can also make reference to Beijing uh, Exchange, Star Market, and, Jam, and the um, AIM 
in the UK so that we improve matching between um, the bids and offers so as to boost market liquidity and address the issue of a stagnant market that is to enhance the overall market liquidity in Hong Kong. To further enhance market capitalization and market liquidity, we need to attract uh, investors from around the world. We should attach importance to uh, investments in INT. We should have regard to the distinct, need, distinct needs of um, different places so as to attract startups in ASEAN markets and uh, the Middle East to uh, invite them to get secondary listing in Hong Kong or dual listing. In Shanghai, Shenzhen, they have the Star Market and the Chinet. They have the Green Channel for startup, uh, INT startups. Sim we should follow suit so that we can invite them to get listed in Hong Kong as well to support the development of um, the financial market in Hong Kong. Mr. Lee Chen Kang, thank you, Mr. President. In Hong Kong, we have the main board and jam. In 1999, this GEM board was established. It was originally called Growth Enterprise Market. It, it was supposed to provide a financing avenue for small and medium enterprises with potential. Startups are part of GEM. According to statistics in 2017, GEM uh, there were 18 new listings on GEM. That was the peak it, after 2019. There was a drastic drop. By 2020, there were uh, 15 and 8 new listings, respectively. And then in 2022, there was only one listing, new listing on GEM. According to Hong Kong X, for market capitalization in 2019, the figure dropped from 180 billion Hong Kong dollars to 63 billion this year, down by 65 percent. The market is losing interest in GEM. There is a free fall on uh, t turnover on GEM, with dwindling interest among investors. GEM has become nothing but window dressing. The financial sector is of the view that the regulator is to blame. They have this mindset to attract only larger issuers to get listed in Hong Kong, whereas for smaller applicants, they face a lot of uh, hurdles in the application. Now, some small enterprises might have submitted applications twice or three times to no avail, and in the end, they would turn to other markets. Now, we are of the view that we should keep them uh, uh, to the best we can instead of uh, benefiting others. KPIs should be introduced to reduce the time, cost, and the Cost in professional services for SMEs. In 2021, the Beijing Exchange was established. Um, a new mechanism was set up for um, that relates to a transfer mechanism among the three boards. There is also a transfer mechanism to NASDAQ uh, in South Korea, which helps and small enterprises grow. The transfer mechanism has an important role to play. We should follow Beijing and South Korea and set up a similar transfer mechanism. After the GEM reform, it has become more complicated for a company to switch to the main board, and that also causes a drop in the turnover. After the reform of GEM in 2018, there is a higher threshold for the lists for listings, the streamlined transfer mechanism was scrapped. As a result, many jam listings found it very difficult to 
be transferred to the main board for listing. And this causes the market capitalization and turnover to dwindle. Now, in fact, in South Korea, they face a similar issue. In 2022, they launched a number of measures There is an ex uh, there is a um, um, an express channel for the uh, startups to transfer to the other board. Um, they relax the requirements and remove obstacles, so as to revive the South Korean financial market. As a result, we should reinstate the streamlined transfer mechanism to make jam listing more attractive, so that it can give way to its give play to its role to help enterprises grow. In the 14th five-year plan, the um, country provides express support for Hong Kong to be an international financial center. We should do more to encourage investor participation, Mr. Bill Tang. I fully support Mr. Ambrose Lamb's original motion. A vibrant equity market, a stock market is the most effective indicator of the performance of an economy. Deloitte published a report in relation to um, global IPO rankings, and Hong Kong ranked the, the eighth. In this paradigm shift of p power from west to east, for those uh, ranking the top places, we have uh, uh, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and then um, all the way Abu Dhabi, and Hong Kong ranks the eighth. For the Europe and London, they are faring not faring as well. They rank the bottom. So we have so many emerging places topping the charts. Now, why do people go to Shenzhen, Shanghai instead of Hong Kong? It's not about the external headwinds in Asia. The Asian market is actually quite buoyant. Why is it that we don't get a share of this uh, success? It affects not only small enterprises, but big corporations as well. I'm, of course, a layman on how we should help SMEs get listed. Uh, we should attract not only uh, mainland, but overseas enterprises to come to Hong Kong because we are a metropolis. I'm thinking that we should remove the obstacle between the market in Hong Kong and the mainland. Now, under one country, two systems, are we having an obstacle here in inviting enterprises in the mainland to come? Why is it impossible? Can we narrow the gap? Are we trying hard enough to break the barrier? Second, we need to be innovative in putting in place a system or a mechanism to attract SMEs to come. Well, I'm trying to be innovative. In fact, can we use um, e Hong Kong dollar as uh, as the um, criterion of settlement for the for Gem in the U.S. They're striving for T plus zero settlement. Why don't we use e Hong Kong dollar? so that we can have um, tokenized transactions. Well, that hinges on the stable coin concept. The cryptocurrency is not for speculation. There should be some sort of a guarantee, um, exchange guarantee. How about using e Hong Kong dollar for uh, transactions on GEM so that we can achieve T plus zero? At least this is a gimmick. This is how we're being innovative, how we are harnessing technology. I think I've given some really good suggestions. I hope the administration will give it a thought so that we can bring vibrancy to the securities market.
after looking at our RPO ranking, I am alarmed because we're not getting a share of the prosperity of uh, Asian markets. Mr. Brave Chen, thank you, President. I thank the Under Secretary. Many electrical members are experts in this area. For me, I agree with Mr. Ambrose Lam. His motion says that we should bring in different kinds of international investors to Hong Kong and take part in our stock market. President Xi Jinping said this in his speech on July 1st last year. He asked us to strengthen our role as international financial trade centers, etc. Financial market comes first. Mr. Edmund Wong asks the government to review and to reform the system. Let's look at the broader international trends. In the past, we looked to Europe and the US, but now we must look beyond that. We need to do more and get things done quickly in strengthening our position. I also agree with Mr. Robert Lee about revitalizing the securities market. We want greater vibrancy in the stock market. This area deserves more thought on how we can do better. Now, I represent the national committees and groups. Many people there are from the business sector. I'm an independent executive director of a lesser company. I've heard that we should all I've heard that we should all work harder so that we don't get overtaken by other emerging economies. The DAB, me, Mr. Holden Chow, Mr. Starry Lee, Mr. Gary Chen, we went on the visit to ASEAN. Hong Kong is very attractive to ASEAN. Mr. John Lee also led the team to ASEAN, to the Middle East. Those people want to come here. We talk and then they want to get listed here. But they look at our stock market. Little activity. They've also heard about predatory investors targeting our stock market. Even for profitable businesses, their share prices fall. Firms want to make a profit, but if they are subject to pressure, then firms want to wait and see. And we need to watch out for predatory tactics in the stock market. Our professional departments, the Bureau, should think about ways to protect our stock market. We need a level playing field, a, health, a healthy environment. President Xi also asked us to become an international INT center. This is linked to securities. We need to find tech firms with potential. We need to help them get listed and have healthy development and become a listed company on the main board or even become a unicorn. Now our officials are the experts in this area. They need to safeguard our firms. They should not be held back by old rules. We get these things right and then we can live up to expectations from all sides and also the expectations from President Xi. That is, we need to strengthen our role as an international financial center and become an international INT center. I so submit. Thank you, President. Dr. Kennedy Wong. President, Hong Kong is a highly open and internationalized financial center. Our financial, or rather, securities market boasts a well-developed regulatory system. Some gem issuers were plagued by over-concentration of shares and limited liquidity, and among other issues. So in 2018, there were changes to the gem listing rules. The result was that there was a higher threshold for listing Regulation was strengthened. 
but the stricter rules come with side effect. That is, SMEs are finding it harder to get listed. The gem board is in doldrums. Since 2022, we don't see a single new listing on gem. The trade has said the gem listing rules are too stringent. The firms are having a hard time. Costs are high, so listing is not attractive for them. Firms listed on GEM cannot change their principal operating business, but the markets change quickly. Are these rules holding back the market? Let's look at Japan. They are discharging nuclear waste water, hurting seafood companies. Those companies are on the verge of collapse. If our gem listed firms cannot change their principal business, they may have to fold, they have to halt trading. That's bad for retail investors. The 2018 rule changes also remove the link between gem and the main board. So starting from 2018, gem was no longer a stepping stone to the main board. So some SMEs with potential no longer go for jam as a pathway to the main board. They give up getting listed. They go for other financing options. The regulatory intent in 2018 was good. But the economy is struggling. The market is in doldrums. We have to look at the situation and be pragmatic. We need to review the old policies. We need to prevent systemic financial risks. At the same time, we should be more aggressive and achieve a better balance between market development and regulation. Many tech firms and SMEs with potential require huge amounts of funding, but for all sorts of reasons, they find it hard to raise funds. So here's my idea. The Hong Kong Investment Corporation may, can maybe learn from the mainland. We can set aside some funding, 5 or 10 percent would do. Take that and turn it into venture capital. If a firm falls within our strategic domains that we want to develop, can we have the government co-invest in those funds. With government funding, other investors will be joining in. And also, can our SAR government talk to the mainland? Through the Shanghai Hong Kong Stock Connect or Shenzhen Hong Kong Stock Connect, can we do something about the large investors? If an investor invests, say, five million Hong Kong dollars, can we let them invest in GEM or under or in the tech firms under chapters 18A, 18C of the main board? Bringing in professional investors can provide greater vibrancy to the market, and we can enhance our appeal. I so submit. I support the motion and the amendments. Dr. Tanya Hung. Thank you, President. I support Mr. Ambrose Lam's motion and the amendment from the members. Here are my ideas. First, a streamlined transfer mechanism. A consultation is going on. We can consider setting up a portfolio within GEM. Companies in this portfolio are those that have been on GEM for a while, and if they meet some criteria, they can move to the main board under simplified rules. We can look at the track record of just one year. 
or we can stick to the pre-2017 rules, that is, no need for a sponsor, no need for an IPO prospectus. And we make things easier for firms to go from JAM to the main board. Second, listing fees. We need a subsidies scheme for the listing fees of SMEs. We have all kinds of subsidies for businesses. But there is no such mechanism for listing fees. For SMEs, listing fees are a huge expense. We want to encourage SMEs to get listed. To do that, I suggest government subsidies. This should be considered. Third, let's review the existing processes to see where we can speed things up. Let's look at the listing process. Mainland firms have to go through a CSRC and then they come to Hong Kong, they have to go to HKEX and the Securities and Futures Commission. They have to submit the papers, documents. Each step of the way, it takes time. The listing documents, financial indicators, the information needs to be provided in a timely way. The applicant has to submit document. And this is hard for SMEs. So we need to look for possible efficiency gains through a review of the current process. Fourth, we need a Belt and Road financing platform, a board dedicated to Belt and Road. We need to find the best investment projects from state-owned enterprises. We can get them to seek listing in Hong Kong. And then we will see greater liquidity in Hong Kong's market. Fifth, we need to further enhance and expand mutual market access. First, SMEs should be covered by the Hong Kong Stock Connect so that participants of the Hong Kong Stock Connect can take, can invest in SMEs. Right now, there's a threshold of $5 billion, and this is very hard for some participants. We want SMEs to get listed, but we also deny them access to Hong Kong Stock Connect. This makes no sense. We should also relax the eligibility requirements for mainland investors who take part in the Hong Kong Stock Connect. Right now, the bar is, the threshold is half a million dollars, and that turns away many participants. For new listings, they should also be covered by the Hong Kong Stock Connect. We should let mainland investors take part in IPOs, and this is what I would call as an IPO connect. These measures will create a good environment for SMEs to seek financing and so submit. Madam Yong Hoi Yen. President, I speak support of Mr. Lam Seng Kang's original motion on uh, comprehensively reviewing the securities market regime for SMEs. In the 45-year plan, Hong Kong has given a support to develop into an international wealth and asset management center, and we should also grasp the opportunities brought about by uh, the uh, GBA development and ASEP, etc. The development of this sector is most important to the prosperity and innovation of Hong Kong. However, SMEs face many difficulties in uh, listing. Uh, the um, processing time is very long and the threshold is too high. The government must address these issues. Some members mentioned Pitt Marwick's report that Hong Kong has fallen to the eighth position when it comes to listings. However, in the same report uh, that uh, Hong Kong is tipped to be able to regain its uh, top five position by the end of this year. We must uh, 
catch up since the reform in 2018 the listing requirements in jam is very stringent uh, the simplified or simtrine transfer mechanism was removed some smes said that they could not apply for listing in gem they had no choice but to raise funds elsewhere this will undermine hong kong's position as a fund raising hub now they need a valuation of 150 million dollars before they are eligible this is no longer a startup so some say that the threshold is too high the processing time is too slow from submission of application to hearing and approval it take it took close to two years recently there would be a hearing and questionings as we all know during the inquiry uh, the inquiry is also a painful process this can bring uncertainty to the business plans of SMEs that's why Jam cannot play its role as a stepping stone because of the listing requirements. This is a big setback for SMEs in listing and fundraising. Even the financial services sector, the legal and accountancy sectors are being affected. It's widely reported that international law firms have massive uh, layoffs because of uh, the lack of listings in JAM. They don't have any inquiries anymore. If we lose talents in this sector, they will be gone forever. They may be serving in overseas markets. As we all know, conveyancing, we all know how the property market is doing. We can't expect uh, IPO experts to engage in uh, domestic or family um, uh, issues. So this will deal a blow to our international reputation, given that we have brain drain and uh, succession problem. We must keep these talents. Hong Kong is a premier location for fundraising and investment. The government must keep up its efforts to enhance the competitiveness of our fundraising market. I suggest that the government introduce the streamlined transfer mechanism again to allow GEM issuers to transfer to the main board to provide more fundraising opportunities for SMEs, though they can develop their business. In reviewing the GEM listing regime, we will attract more people and more SMEs to list and raise funds in Hong Kong. Thank you. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Nam Sen Kang, you may now speak on the amendments. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank Mr. Edmund Wong for Mr. Robert Lee for moving amendments to my motion. Mr. Edmund Wong's amendment reflects the problems in the existing IPO market. We're putting the card before the horse. Now, the board is supposed to be here to help SME raise funds, but because of obstacles in the institution, SMEs find it impossible to get listed. It tarnishes Hong Kong's international image as an international center. As for Mr. Robert Lee's amendment, it is true that market regulation is necessary to stop fraudsters from cheating people of money. But now things are too tight. There is no breathing room for the uh, for SMEs. Even our reputation as an international financial center is at stake. The government should review the um, role and positioning of the SFC and the Hong Kong X. There should not be any overlapping of duties. There should be a clear division of work. Now, Hong Kong X uh, have two, um, are wearing two hats. It promotes market development. It is also a regulator. At the same time, it is also a listed entity. That means 
uh, in taking forward its uh, business, uh, the Hong Kong X will need to have regard to shareholders' interests so that with minimum cost, it can make more profit and be accountable to their shareholders. So if you're a big corporation, uh, it will be easier for you to be listed. You'll be welcomed by the Hong Kong X. Well, even if there are problems with listing issues, the Hong Kong X and SFC will allow the big corporations to go ahead anyway. Some professional investors have told me that um, one would be very careful in choosing smaller stocks so that you won't incur substantial losses. Whereas, even for the too big to fail, comp uh, too big to fail corporations, if they do collapse, you suffer huge losses. According to our survey, the Hong Kong X and the SFC both lack a dedicated unit to uh, handle overseas applications. Like Mr. Holden Chow said, for big corporations, we're using the criteria for big corporations on smaller applicants. It's inappropriate. The regulators continue to grill them with um, unreasonable questions to pose obstacles to overseas applicants. Last year, it took on average 218 days for the application to be vetted. And we're only talking about successful cases and not those applications still pending. Some In some situations, as um, it took three years for a company to be listed. And because of some questions from SFC out of the blue, some applicants decided to withdraw the application. Because of the unreasonable, unreasonable obstacles, some companies are deterred from um, getting this in Hong Kong. Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury. President, I thank Mr. Ambrose Lamb for his motion, and Mr. Edwin Wall and Mr. Robert Lee for their amendments and the 17 members who spoke. Members of great insights on ways to boost Hong Kong stock market. Here I give a consolidated response to members' comment. Hong Kong is Asia's leading financial market in our bond market. We rank first in issuing bonds for Asian issuers in insurance and risk management tools, we are also on top of the world. In wealth management, we also come second in the world and first in Asia in terms of the wealth management tools we have on offer. We want to develop Hong Kong into a financing platform with greater depth and breadth because this matters for our effort to cement our role as an international financial center. And this is part of our ongoing work. HKEX and the Security and the Futures Commission keep reviewing our listing regime in the recent years saw reforms so that we can seize the opportunities from global development. We want to bring in firms from different places to boost the competitiveness and sustainable development of our stock market, the government set up the task force on reviewing the stock market liquidity. They will review the key internal and external factors affecting market liquidity and make concrete recommendations on the listing regime. The goal is to achieve a more vibrant and dynamic capital market for Hong Kong. Today's focus is on JAM, formerly, formerly known as the Growth Enterprise Market. Set up in 1999, JAM saw many changes to its listing rules in light of changing market conditions. The current state and way forward of JAM has been thoroughly discussed by members on various occasions over the past year. The government, the SFC, and HEEX have kept an eye on market changes and heard loud and clear comments about the issues about jam and calls for easier financing for SMEs and startups from LegCo members and some market players. We are broadly of one mind with the members who spoke about the issues at hand.
Jam's major problems stand out in both primary and secondary listing markets. On the primary market, Jam's 2018 reform was followed by a plunge in new listings, with no new IPO since last year. We note comments from logical members in the market about the time-consuming listing process for SMEs, the stringent vetting rules for issuers may also put SMEs off. On the secondary market, we have spotted a market drop in the transaction volume in recent years, especially for the stocks of smaller cap firms. This led to price volatilities. The number of new listings and market liquidity point to waning interest in GEM from issuers and investors. The government cares deeply about these issues. We have time and again explored enhancements with HKEX and regulators. We want to fully boost Hong Kong's competitiveness as an all-rounded fundraising center and foster the long-term development of SME's financing ecosystem. That's why we agree a full review is needed for GEM's positioning and function as a listing platform for SMEs and startups to fully leverage GEM's role in channeling capital to where it matters and driving the real economy. To this end, the government helped HKEX reach out to trade and professional bodies, issuers, institutional investors, and other stakeholders. We gauged the market's views on the, vari on the various aspects of refining GEM. HKEX has balanced different factors. Late last month, HKEX made recommendations and started consulting the public. Based on the views from members and market players and the experience of similar markets outside Hong Kong, especially the mainland's experience in financing platforms for SMEs and startups, HKEX proposes reforms in three areas to boost GEM's appeal while maintaining strong safeguards for investors. First, many in the market argue the current GEM listing threshold hinders the listing of firms with high growth potential that lack a track record of operating cash flow because of engagement in R&D. HKEX proposes a new financial eligibility test for firms that meet the requirements about market cap, revenue, and R&D expenditure but lack the cash flow required to apply for GEM listing. This new test can attract growing firms driven by technology and research from new economic sectors of the GBA and overseas to Hong Kong for listing. This means tapping new sources of issuers for our listing platform. Meanwhile, growing tech firms can access financing. This boosts the technological R&D and innovation of the GBA, including Hong Kong. In turn, the real economy and emerging industries will see greater development. Second, some stakeholders call for a better mechanism to switch to the main board to encourage GEM listing. They also argue the market quality reforms since 2018 have effectively reduced the risk of shell companies. With these comments in mind, HKEX proposes a streamlined transfer mechanism on top of the existing switching arrangement to let GEM issuers who are eligible move to the main board without having to appoint a sponsor to perform due diligence or, or publishing a prospectus standard listing document. This gives sought-after small, small and medium enterprises in the market an easy path to main board listing, which serves as a goal and incentive for sustained growth. The proposed streamlined mechanism has requirements about the GEM issuer's liquidity and average market cap before the transfer to ensure the quality of the SMEs taking this path. One particular area to look at is their past liquidity in the secondary market. Third, to address calls for lowering GEM issuer's compliance costs HKEX proposes appropriately reducing issuers' ongoing compliance obligations. This includes dropping the rule of appointing an executive director as the compliance officer. The engagement period will shorten for a GEM issuer's compliance advisor so that it ends on the day the issuer publishes its financial results for the first instead of the second full financial year commencing after the date of its initial listing.
there will be no more mandatory reporting of quarterly results. This means aligning the ongoing obligations for GEM issuers and their main board peers. HKEX believes these measures will help bring in quality firms with growth potential to Hong Kong. In the long run, this can make our market more appealing to investors and issuers. The public consultation will conclude on November 6th. Members are welcome to give HKEX their comments on the proposals for further enhancement. Based on the comments received, HKEX aims to implement the revised listing rules in the first quarter next year. We do not expect this reform alone will solve GEM's problems for good. The government will keep working with HKEX and other partners in financial services on a more proactive approach to promote the strengths of Hong Kong's financial market to target markets overseas such as ASEAN and the Middle Eastern economies. The goal is to attract potential issuers and investors from different places to Hong Kong for financial activities. Meanwhile, the Task Force on Enhancing Stock Market Liquidity has submitted a report to the government on ways to boost market competitiveness and strengthening, strengthen investor confidence. The government, HEEX, and financial regulators are studying and considering the recommendations. Members raised concerns about the inconsistent practices in vetting listing applications. On this, we have asked the SFC and HAEX to keep an eye out for this. They should ensure equal treatment for all listing applicants to give stakeholders a clear and fairer picture. We have already asked HAEX to break down the number of new listings and average vetting time for the main board and gym by market cap. This includes the time taken by HAEX vetting and applicants' responses. The details have been disclosed in replies to the Finance Committee during the scrutiny of estimate. To enhance transparency, HKEX discloses every month on its website the number of listing applications for the main board and gem, and the average number of days it takes to issue a comment letter for listing applications each month. We must stress that vetting is a key step to ensure compliance of listing applicants and market quality. The goal is to safeguard the interests of the investing public subscribing for the shares, especially for some retail investors who may lack the professional expertise in a firm's finance. Our prevailing system features the Stock Exchange of Hong Kong Limited under HKEX as the frontline watchdog vetting listing applications under the requirements of the listing rules. The SFC exercises the right under the Securities and Futures Stock Market Listing Rules and the Securities and Futures Ordinance to inspect listing applications and intervene in serious cases. Applicants have to meet listing requirements and disclose adequate and, ac and accurate information that is not misleading about their business and prospects. This is to ensure responsibility to the investing public. The time vetting takes mainly depends on the adequacy of the disclosed information to meet listing requirements and the quality of the disclosure and replies to regulators' queries. For a global stock market, openness and quality both matter. Gem reforms and the growth of quality issuers of qu potential being listed will make our listing platform more competitive and catch the attention of even more investors and bring more deals from afar. This will drive the growth of various financial services. A healthy ecosystem will emerge for the, develop for the intermediaries from different backgrounds. The government will keep listening to members' views attentively in driving the constant review of the listing regime and attempts to further boost efficiency and transparency by HKEX and the SFC. We will balance market development with regulatory needs 
by giving the public, including potential issuers, a picture of the relevant processes and requirements to facilitate the work. Once again, I thank Mr. Ambrose Lam for his motion and all members who spoke so that we can have a focused discussion of, the, of this topic. I believe the government, the regulators, HEEX and members share the same goal. That is, boosting the competitiveness of our listing platform. This is to provide broader financing channels with greater flexibility for firms at tall growth stages from all sectors. The goal is to attract quality firms from different places, including the GBA, Belt and Road countries and Hong Kong, to seek listing and, and expand their business. Let us work together for a better listing regime, drive the real economy, and bring more opportunities for the securities and other sectors. I so submit. Thank you. I now call upon Mr. Edmund Wong to move an amendment. Mr. President, I move my amendment. I propose a question to you that Mr. Edmund Wong's amendment be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Robert Lee, as Mr. Wen Wong's amendment has been passed, you may move your amendment. Mr. President, I move my further amendment. I propose a question to you that Mr. Robert Lee's further amendment be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Ambrose Lam, Mr. President, I thank members who have spoken and expressed their views, especially Mr. Bill Tang and Mr. Monique Chan. They explained that as far as the economic outlook is concerned, it is not as bleak. Like Mr. Bill Tang said, that there is a shift of uh, power from west to east, and Mr. and the other member also mentioned that. Uh, there is opportunity for Hong Kong to grasp the um, and uh, that, that there is a genuine need, financing need for SMEs. I also agree that we should create an ecosystem. This is not happening yet, and that is why we need to put forward a reform. Mr. Rock Chan and Dr. Tan Yue Heng also made a lot of useful suggestions. So let me summarize. First, the Hong Kong Exchange and the SFC should adopt a new mindset. If the governments and the regulators are unwilling to um, mend their ways, it will be futile. We should do away with overlapping procedures. We should provide a level playing field to different sectors and industries. We should reform the existing market structure so that enterprises in different sectors from different places can come to Hong Kong for listing so that we can diversify our market. For the main board, the, the threshold should be lowered. The minimum cap market ca uh, capitalization requirement should be lowered to attract more enterprises to raise funds here. Now, for SMEs, we need to give an overhaul to the system for medium-sized enterprises to be transferred to the main board, not just uh, getting a listing on GEM. There are many supporting policies, such as Petro Yuan, Belt and Road Initiative, etc. So we have the support of the country. We also need to grasp the opportunities uh, presented by the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Family Offices, so on and so forth, so that we can diversify our uh, Platform and financing avenues. Chapter five of the Article five of the Basic Law provides that it is the Hong Kong SAR government's responsibility to safeguard our position as an international financial center. More encouragement should be made to um, for investors. Now, without heeding uh, our advice, the Hong Kong jam um, is now a blunder. The government should look squarely at the issue. A multidisciplinary task force should be set up to review the whole regime. 
including the listing and withdrawal mech the listing mechanism. I urge members to support my motion. I put the question to you that is Mr. Ambrose Lamb's motion as amended by Mr. Edmund Wong and Mr. Robert Lee be passed. Will those in favour please raise their hands? Those against please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. This council will now adjourn until the 25th of October, Wednesday, 11 a.m.